Let's give uh, Diana a stab at this. Diana, how you doing? Hi, I'm good. Good. What do you got for me tonight? So going back to this whole boss babe thing, my yeah. question would be um, kind of like, how do we as women who maybe are, I, I don't want to say like, like super big boss babes, but like just confident in who we are as a person, confident in our careers, our lives as they are. How do we tone it down without changing who we are as a person? Yeah, that's tough, isn't it? Because what do you do for a living? So I am a physical therapist by trade, but I do, um, I'm a PPS coordinator right now. So I do coding and chart reviews and all that stuff for a hospital to make sure we don't get audited. Okay. Yeah. So how do you turn that off is, is what the question is. How do I what? How do you turn that off is what you're asking me? Well, my question is like just in dating, right? I have been labeled as aggressively sarcastic because that's my personality. But yeah. I do have friends and myself, like I have a doctor of physical therapy degree. Not that I'm going airing out that stuff to people like on a first date or anything like that. But I just find that maybe sometimes, um, yeah, that is intimidating. But I don't want to like not be who I am as a person just because somebody else feels intimidated by that. That to me seems like maybe their confidence level is not where it needs to be. Um, but you know, watching the clip that you showed of that date, which was a very awkward scenario all the way around. How um, often do you see that in your own personal life when you date? Uh, I see it often. Like the softer guys are difficult, they're awkward, socially anxious, they're not calibrated to the conversation. You see that a lot? I see it. I would say 50, 50 is how often I see it. Mm -hmm. Um, just because I like Watching that was hard to watch. I don't rattle off questions left and right like that. I like to be asked a question and marinate it, marinate mm -hmm. on it for a little bit. Firing off questions, I mean, you might as well just like, here's my resume at that point kind of situation. Mm -hmm. um, but there are definitely times, and I don't know if it's just because people are nervous that the, the conversation is awkward, which is totally fine. I give people the benefit of the doubt. Um, but in those situations it's difficult as a female to be labeled that way um and so yeah i'm just wondering what is the easiest way or how um could we be perceived better i don't and again i don't know if it's it might just be i'll chalk it up to personality at that point yeah your personality is pretty much hardwired by the time you're in your 20s and 30s isn't it mm -hmm. how old are you 33 yeah. And what's your plan? Are you like you dating? You're looking for uh, a guy, boyfriend, family? Like what's the strategy for you? Yeah. I mean, I'm single. I'm looking. I'm not aggressively looking. I'm not that type of female that like is trying like we watched. I feel like that's another thing. There's women out there out of desperation because mm. oh, we're in our 30s. Oh, woe is me. All my kids are all my friends have kids. And mm. that's just not how I am. I want my life to turn out the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm, you know, dating, like out there looking to date, but I'm not trying to get married tomorrow either. So, mm -hmm. but I mean, like you understand there's a timeline though. And you know, like you have to sort of get things moving if you want to have a family, right? Like it's not something that you can put off for too late. No, it's not. But at the end of the day, I realize that either it's in the cards for me or it's not. I'm not going to force something. I'm not going to force somebody to be with me or settle because I want a family and I'm on a timeline. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the guys in the chat sort of talk amongst themselves. That's that's how chat seems to work. But uh, you're throwing off like strong boss girl vibes, right? It's like, I got this. You know, I'm good either way. I do well in life. You know, everything's good. You've taken care of yourself. You're obviously an attractive woman. You can date. You don't have a problem with that. But what you're going to start running into is, I mean, you're starting to see it right now, is that about half the guys you're dealing with, they're not very masculine, right? They don't know how to calibrate to a girl to begin with, let alone a strong girl, because that's what you are, right? Mm -hmm. Have you always lived by yourself? Yes. For how long? Um, I've lived by myself for about four years now. I lived with a boyfriend the last time I was living with someone. Okay. Why did that end? Um, that ended because we just didn't see life the same way. Um, he 
was in the military, which happy Memorial day and to all those serving and all that. I have absolutely no problem mm. with the military. Cause I don't want that to come off as like something, but he, you know, as far as like back then when I wanted to get married to him and have kids, he wanted to pursue his career, mm. which is fine, but I can't be, you know, I couldn't have, I wasn't able to be strung along like that. Um, so it, that's just kind of how it ended. So you ended it? It was a mutual yeah. ending. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, I was in my early to mid twenties, we were both changing as people. And I just kind of feel like we decided that we really were not meant to be together. How long ago was that? Uh, four years ago. Okay. Yeah. So, you, so you've been dating for four years. You haven't found a guy that was worthy for, for anything longer term? No, I, my last relationship I was in was two years ago. Mm -hmm. And why did that one end? That one ended um, because we fought a lot and I don't think that it was a very healthy relationship. Um, he was the type of person that did not make me a priority and that's what, what led to so many fights. Not that, that I wanted- not making you a priority? Like, can you give me an example? Yeah, so he was in television. Um, mm -hmm. So he was very much about his image and all of that. And his friends were above all everybody else was above all his, you know, himself, he was above all, which is fine. I'm not saying I don't ever want to be someone's number one priority. I should never be someone's number one priority. Mm -hmm. But I always felt like I was at the bottom of the totem pole. Just I almost felt like I was begging for his attention. Um, and so that's pretty much why it ended. I mean, a woman wants a guy with a sparkle in his eye, but they don't want that sparkle to be them, right? Yeah. So, so this is where things get a little touchy difficult, right? So you're with a top shelf guy, he's in television, he's making his career his his priority. Um, what's wrong with that exactly? Like what's wrong with him putting that dent in the universe and then, you know, taking you along for the ride and you're a passenger on that bus and you build a family together? There was nothing wrong with that part of it, but it's when you're putting, it was other people. So for instance, he had a lot of friends who were girls, which I don't have a problem with. But at the same time, if there are people that I haven't met that you used to date and you're going out to dinner with them, but you haven't taken me out to dinner in a while, then what are we doing here? Mm, okay. You know, it's just like it was... He was leaving some doors open is what you yeah. think? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, if, if you've got the intention to go in a certain direction find a guy, have a family, settle down, do all that stuff. That's fine. You know, that's why we're here, right? You know, that's why we're on the planet to do all these things. You, you're going to have to date categorically with intention in that area, but without coming off as too terse, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the word terse means? No, but I guess I could look it up. <laughs> yeah. So, so funny story. So I used to work in collections back in my twenties and I had a, I had a review, you know, you'd go in every year and they, they, you know, review you and write all this shit down and you read it. And I was like, what the hell does terse mean? Right. And it's like, mm -hmm. it's one of the words that sort of stuck out because that's who I am. Right. Like I'm a firstborn. I want to get shit done. I don't sugarcoat things. Rainbows and blood butterflies aren't for me, but I'm a man and that works. Right. You, you do come off as a little bit terse, right? Like you do come off as a little bit harsh. You do come off, you know, it's like, I got this. I don't need a man. You know, like I, I can figure this out. And you know what, even if it doesn't get figured out, I'll still be okay. Mm -hmm. But but the truth of the matter is, is there's loads and loads of women in their 40s and 50s that never had the opportunity to have a family that don't have any kids that are surrounding themselves with pets, you know, a lot of the times and trying to, you know, placate that vacuum, you know, with something. Mm -hmm. um, soften it down a little bit. Right. Um, th there's um, there's a lady on YouTube, Suzanne Vanker. And she talks more to women when it comes down to, you know, getting to the point of you know, uh, building a family dynamic and having children and all that sort of stuff. She's got a lot of really good podcasts, you know, in that area. And she tries to help women out. I think women will more than likely listen to something like that. But I can tell you from, from the perspective of the kind of guy that you want, and I know the exact type of like avatar that you're looking for. Um, you're, you're not going to be the priority at the end of the day, but you will be important. And what he's looking for is he's looking for a woman that will be a complement to his life, not the focus of it. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Right? Like, uh, and you have to be okay with that, right? Like you have to be okay with coming in that place because your place in that, in that guy's life is going to end up being the mother, you know, the homemaker, 
you're not going to be the breadwinner, right? Because you, mm-hmm. because you want to date that guy that's better than you. You know, you want that, that arm candy that you can show up, you know, with your friends, bring, bring them out to Thanksgiving. Hey, this is Bob, you know, big Bob sort of over here, right? Yeah. Everybody's got like a nickname for him, but yeah, you got to soften down a little bit. You know what I mean? Like you gotta, you know, you gotta stop drinking the, uh, the boss bitch Kool-Aid, you know, drink some water you know, from time to time and, and stop sipping, you know, sipping on the hardcore stuff. Because when you come off that edgy, you got to remember, like when guys are out working hard and they're putting a dent in the universe and they're, and they're, and they're doing something of some significance, they don't want to come home to a nightmare. They don't want to come home to a fight. They don't want to come home to what you do. It's like, you know, they want pleasantries. They want love. They want a nice meal. They want to be kissed. You know, they want to see beauty. Yeah. You know, I mean, and I will say, like, in a relationship, I'm not edgy like this. I love a healthy banter. But I always, t- like, turn myself as, like, the Sour Patch Kid. First, what do you I'm think, sour and then I'm sweet sort of situation. What do you think would happen if I, if if we called your ex right now and asked him, is Diana a bit tough? Is she a little bit terse? I think he would agree with you in a sense. Um but at the same time, my ex was a nice guy. So I wasn't always as I was definitely toned down for that because yeah. I can read a room. I can I understand that. Um, but I will say that, you know, part of my terseness, if you want to call it that, definitely has a lot to do with just the society we live in these days. I oh, mean, yeah. as you said, you know, um, guys are being made to be weaker and i and you like you said women are being made to be stronger it's not that that's how i necessarily have made myself into it but i feel like the society we live in and i will say a lot of the guys that i have gone on dates with the ones that are like just down to you know have sex and all that kind of stuff i'm not going to be nice to that person i don't want to be nice to that person that's disrespectful towards me so i feel like a lot of that terseness is initial because i'm trying to you know barrier it's, it's a protective it is. mechanism. Yeah. So how do you balance out protecting yourself from guys like that and also still being feminine to attract the right guy, right? Like the soft side of the feminine gal that you need to be. Like the number one selling book in the world is, um, uh, it's something about um, bitches. Uh, Men love bitches or something like that. You know the book that I'm talking about, right? Yeah. What's it called? I can't remember, but I, it's something like that, but I don't remember exactly what it's called. I've never read it. Have any of your girlfriends read it or talked about it? I don't why men so. love, why, why men love bitches. Thank you, Moff. Yeah. <laughs> that one. Yeah. This is, this is the number one selling book in the world when it comes to giving advice on love and dating in the landscape. And it's like, it is the worst book I've ever gone through. And it essentially masculinized women, tells them to be disagreeable, basically tells them to be boss bitches. Right. And it's like, mm-hmm. guys don't want to deal with that. They want a woman. They yeah. want to, you know, they want somebody soft and beautiful and feminine with curves. It smells nice. You know, they don't yeah. want, you know, the hen pecking stuff before we wrap up. Let me ask you a question. Your, your ideal guy, what age range would he be in? Um, probably anywhere from 30 to like 45. Okay. So I'm just going to pull up my, uh, calculator here, exclude married, obviously, cause you don't want to date a married guy. Uh, do you have any preference for uh, race, white, black, Asian, or any color or shade matter for for you? Um, not necessarily, no. Okay, minimum height for you. Do you have a height preference for guys? Um, probably like five ten and above, I guess. Okay, how tall are you? Five three. Five ten is pr- pretty pretty good. Like, is that a is that a hard line in sand? You won't do like a five eight. Well, if I if I'm in six inch heels and i'm i mean i i'm just basing it off my heel height so if i'm in six inch heels and i'm at least the same height around so okay five nine you want to go five nine that's fine okay so let's drag the bar down to five nine and exclude obese you like fit guys or does that even matter i'm down for a dad bod Mm, dad bod's not obese okay so we'll so we'll just exclude that then uh minimum income how much money do they have to make to date you i'm not like money is not uh matter like it does not matter to me at least what you make i would imagine what you do that's all that matters to me at least what you make i would imagine that's fine i've dated guys who have not made as much as me okay so there's this online calculator that was created by some engineers and some geeks on 
ideal men and women's dating preferences. Uh, it's the URL is I got standards, bro.com. So it's kind of a funny, uh, one here, but let me, but let me share it with you on the screen just to sort of give you an idea of what your demographics look like. Not married, any race, at least five foot nine, not obese. I put earning at least $85,000 a year in that age range in the demographics in North America, the chances of you finding that guy is about 1.7% of the male population. It's pretty low. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, when you factor in that guys don't really want to deal with difficulties, top shelf guys, you know, the kind of like the kind of guys that you're going to want to chase. And I'm not saying chase men, but the kind of guys that you want, you know, to mm -hmm. invite into your life to create a, a family with, they've got a lot of options. They've got a lot of options. So being pleasant, being agreeable, like these are all things that you're, that you're going to have to kind of come to grips with or don't, you know, you can just kind of carry on, just be like, I'm, I'm just going to do me. I'm just going to do me. But what I can tell you from experience, and I've talked to lots and lots of dudes now, thousands, you know, at this point, and I've gotten lots and lots of feedback, been doing these podcasts for years now, is most guys don't want to deal with the difficulties of headaches when it comes to getting pushed around, run in a relationship. Mm -hmm. If if they're going to lead, because women want guys to lead. They want to look up to a giant. They want to be in a guy's frame. You know, they don't want to be with a wimp. Yeah. If there's if there's one thing I know that disgusts women is wimpy men. Right. So mm -hmm. you've got to soften your tone. You got to soften your demeanor. You got to tune into your feminine side. OK. Good luck, Diana. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Take care. I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here. That clips from if you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment. You'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line books and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.